Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Abdul Azim bin Abdul Halim. My track number MA17082. I'm from Group 1, Section 2, Fluid Mechanic Lab. Today, I'm going to explain about Lab 2, Flow Pattern of Immerse, Body and Boundary Layer. First, I'm going to explain about Introduction. When a fluid flows to an object, the object will experience a drag force that prevents the object from moving to its direction. The drag force remains the same whether the body moves through the fluid or the fluid flows around the object. If the object with an angle flowing through the fluid, the resultant force won't be not only drag force alone. The horizontal force it is, is the drag force, the vertical force is the lift force which is perpendicular to the flow of the direction. Next, the background study. The theory which des described boundary layer effect was first presented by Ludwig Fran in the early 1900s. Fran was the first to realize that the relative magnitude of the initial and viscous forces came from a layer very near the surface to origin far from the surface. An object moves through a fluid or fluid moves past an object. The particles around the object will be disturbed. The particle right next to the surface stick to the surface. The particles just above the surface are slowed down in their collision with the particles sticking to the surface. These particles slow down the flow just above them. The farther one move away from the surface the fewer the collision affected by the object surface. This creates a thin layer of fluid near the surface in which the velocity changes from zero at the surface to the free stream value away from the surface. Next, the problem statement. The first one is several practical circum circumstances contain flow past bodies. When a fluid moves through bodies, an interaction between the bodies and the fluid arises. Next, the shape can affect the flow of the water. The shape of an object also affects the flow weight. The obstruction to flow within the channel is unavoidable. Last but not least, the drag coefficient for an object is influenced by the shape of the object. That's all for me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Siti Nusala binti Mat Suhaidin, ME1 Today I would like to explain about the objective. Firstly, to develop a full fluid flow measurement technique and calculate the drag and lift force acting on a symmetrical airfoil at various angles of attacks. And the second one, to determine the fluid plate velocity distribution. And the last one, to determine the thickness of the boundary layer of a fluid plate that is supposed to longitudinal flow of rough surface and smooth surface. For scope, the experiment is only focused on flow pattern of symmetric aerofoil at different angle of attack and flow over the flat plate. And the second one, the experiment used a multi-tube manometer to take readings for static head measurement and liquid head on the top portion of the apparatus. And the third one, to calculate the drag and lift force for various shape and angle of attacks. And the last one, to calculate the fluid flow velocity at the plate surface. The experimenters use a vernier caliper connected to the pitot tube and place it on a flow air bench after setting the value. My name is Tanesri Prabhakarat. My ID number is MA17208. Today I am going to present about Chapter 2, Theory of Flow Over Immersed Bodies. The flow of fluids over bodies that are immersed in a fluid called external flow with emphasis on the resulting lift and drag forces. Lift and drag forces also called as a fluid force. Theoretical and experimental approach are used to obtain information on the fluid forces developed by external flows. There are three general categories of bodies shown below. Our first picture Picture A shows two dimensional objects infinitely long and of constant cross sectional size and shape. Picture B shows axisymmetric bodies formed by rotating their cross sectional shape about the axis of symmetry. 
picture C shows three dimension bodies that may or may not possess a line or plane of symmetry. The resultant force in the direction of the upstream velocity is termed the drag D. The resultant force normal to the upstream velocity is termed the lift L. These two formulas are widely used to define dimensionless lift and drag coefficient. The lift coefficient Cl is defined as Cl equals to L over 1 over 2 times rho times u square times a. The drag coefficient Cd is defined as Cd equals to d over 1 over 2 times rho times u square times a. L is the value of lift, d is the value of drag and a is the characteristic area of the object. Rho is the density of flowing fluid and u is the upstream velocity. Okay, I will continue for my part chapter 3, experiment method and procedure. As you can see, this is the experiment materials and apparatus. Firstly, mobile rolling frame with bench top, radio fan 0.55 kW, switch port and drawer for small parts, air intake pipe with throttle valve and thermometer, rectifier, removal nozzle, funnel for air inlet, off air pipe feature for 16 volt water pressure gauge, and then the last one, measuring glands for measuring tubes. We continue for the procedure for experiment 1, flow patterns of symmetry error 4 at different angle of attack. Firstly, the experiment is set up. And then the next one, the, the error 4 model is attached and the screw is twisted to the airflow bench. The next one, the experiment begins with a uh, zero angle of attack. And then the switch is turned on and the movement of the radio fan is permitted. The radio fan speed controller is set to a speed of 12 at first. The results are tabulated and reported. The smoke controller is pressed to make sure the smoke is created into the flow to view the flow of air on the aerofoil. And then, the picture of the flow is taken. The radio fan speed controller is then increased for to 13 until speed of 19. And the last one, step 5 until 8 is repeated by using 0 to 30 angle and 45 angle. As you can see, this is the flow pattern of symmetry error 4 at different angle of attack. And then this is the zero angle of attack. This are uh, 30 angle of attack. And the last one, this is for 45 angle of attack. We continue for the experiment 2 flow over flat plate. Firstly, the experiment is set up. And then the flat plate with smooth surface is inserted into the airflow bench. And then this next one, the first distance is taken as zero and the distance after that is measured. The veneer clipper is attached to the pitot tube. And then as the first data, the pitot tube is touched to the surface of the flat plate. And then this, the main switch and radial fan are turned on. The data are recorded and tabulated. The distance of the plate is taken from 0 mm increased to 150 140 uh, mm by 2 mm, 20 mm and the pitot tube distance from the sur surface of the flat plate is taken from 4 mm increased to 32 mm by 4 mm. And then the last one, step 5 until 8 is repeated by changing the smooth surface with the rough surface. This is the flow of a flat plate and then the second one, rough plate and smooth plate. That's all from me. Thank you. My name is Teti Shalina Binti Sanusi. My ID number is MA18031. I will uh, present about Chapter 4, Results and Discussions. First experiment is flow patterns of symmetric F1 at different attacks of angle. We need to determine the relationship between force and speed. Formulation is the formula used to identify the drag force and lift force. Uh, the results for lift force versus uh, fan speed is the lift force uh, increases with the increasing fan speed at different angle of attack. The highest lift force is at 45 degree angle attack and at the highest speed of 19. Similarly, for the drag force versus fan speed, uh, the drag force increases steadily with the fan speed. Next experiment conducted is flow over flat plate. 
this experiment, we want to determine the relationship between the head, velocity, and random numbers with the boundary layers. Uh, from, from figure shown, head is inversely proportional with boundary layer thickness for smooth surface. Similarly, rough surface also experiences the same things. When increasing the head boundary layer thickness will decreasing. For velocity versus boundary layer, velocity increasing with increase the boundary layer thickness. Highest velocity occur at the smooth surface with boundary layer of 0.028, which are 0.84043. Renal number increase proportionally with the boundary layer thickness. However, rough surface However, rough surface shows drastically change of Reynolds number compared to smooth surface. The velo for velocity versus distance of plate, the velocity proportionally increasing with the distance of plate. Smooth surface undergo up and down for the velocity. However, velocity of rough surface can be seen increasing steadily with the distance, distance plate. In this experiment, I would like to present about discussion of this experiment. Firstly, after measurement, the boundary layer with smooth surface has higher velocity than the rock surface, which will be to the smooth surface having less friction than the rock surface. The smooth surface has higher not number than the rock surface, so the flow becomes more turbulent as the velocity. The range which is provided actually is very high, and the valve is open only, which causes the airflow to flow at minimum speed at end. The initial airflow will already be able to flow. For recommendation, it would be better for the instructor to set the minimum and maximum range inside standardizing the valve opening. This will help students to get better results and can identify the body layer based on the results from this experiment. And also during this experiment, the position of eye is very important as to avoid par parallax error during taking reading. Thus, a proper body posture is much during the particular process. The technical error occur on the airport are regrettable, however, as we may get some valuable data for this. Next, the conclusion for this experiment. First of all, the drag coefficient, which is CD, by the shape of obstacle in the flow. The location and strain process of the sink will also affect the flow. As compared to a circular shape, an aerofoil is more resistant to flow separation. That is due to the degree and the transitional velocity of flow in a circular surface, which is better than the tension of the surface. Only by superimposing the source and stable flow can this flow, flow of this can be formed. The turbulent boundary layer provides a steeper gradient may apply the laminar boundary layer in the surface. The steeper gradient of velocity means that the shear stress will be greater for the turbulent case. Therefore, from an application standpoint, if the shear stress is to be decreased, the preferable flow would be laminar flow. In conclusion, cooperation made between experimental results and theoretical data allow the information to be made that the boundary layer, the boundary layer over the smooth plate was a laminar boundary layer, and the boundary layer, and the boundary layer over the rough side of a plate was turbulent. The difference between these two types of boundary layer was clearly demonstrated. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you.